Hi everyone, welcome to the Ravid Show. Look who I have with me today, Michelle, uh, co-founder and CEO of Airbyte. Michelle, welcome to the Ravid Show. Not a new face to the Ravid Show. We, it feels like uh, you've been uh, on the show so many times, so many different milestones that we have shared. And today it's uh, about uh, Airbyte 2.0. So I'm excited to you know chat about it, uh, all the cool stuff that y'all are uh, y'all have announced. Uh, I know we spoke at uh, when 1.0 was launched. Uh, so can't wait to you know discuss about various things uh, today with you. Yeah, very good to be here, right? You know when you when, when you like something, you go you go back to it. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, so everyone who's attending to, uh, today uh, to uh, O is your, it marks uh, a platform era for data moment with freedom and flexibility the uh, at the center. Enterprise Flex brings hybrid control data activation, pushes clean model data from warehouse into your teams uh, use it, that use every day. And the platform got faster. So uh, that's all. Uh, these are uh, the things that we're going to chat with Michelle today. But Michelle, uh, what changed? Uh, let's set the context here from 1.0 to 2.0. Uh, yeah. What changed and what's new? Yeah, I mean, basically, what we our mission with Airbyte is really we want to make every piece of data available and actionable. So available it means that we have an ability to connect to any kind of system actionable is we can bring this data into any system where it can deliver value a lot of it especially when we're thinking about what uh, like 1.0 was about how do we power analytics workflow how do we power analytics workflow within enterprise so it came with reliability all the uh, checks and, and and controls like SSO, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure yep. that Airbyte can operate within an enterprise context. With 2.0, what we're really looking to do with, the, with this release is go from a, sub, a piece of software that brings data into a warehouse into a piece of software that actually builds pipes across every single system. And yep. the, the three axes that we have are really around like, how are we thinking about data sovereignty, especially in an age of AI? The other yeah. one is around speed. Like the faster mm -hmm. the data flows, the faster you can make decisions, the faster you can get insights. And the last one is around data activation, which is, it's great to have analytics. What happens next? How can you enable <clears> that data to bring value outside of just analytics? And that's the, the data activation. Piece. So really these three axes are the core piece of, of Airbyte. Uh, 2.0 yep. and there is a large piece around like activation is also about how do you make this data available to agency system so that's why we're yep. also investing pretty massively on that front okay that's pretty good and uh thanks for sharing those details uh michelle i have a quick question around uh also the enterprise flex so uh, you know what runs in the control plane versus the data plane itself uh, and how do you keep the data in uh the environment can you share a little bit about that yeah so if you're looking at airbyte preflex you basically had two way of operating airbyte first one is you mm -hmm. use the fully managed platform that airbyte cloud has or you use self-managed enterprise or open source where you manage 100 percent of the airbyte infrastructure with yep. flex what we've done is and, and the reason for why people go for one or the other will depend into in will depend on their like requirements when it comes to regulation, when it comes to company policies, et cetera, et cetera. What we've done with Airbyte Flex is actually we've taken on Airbyte the hardest part about managing Airbyte within your infrastructure. So that's mm -hmm. what we call the control pain. So that's everything around like secret management, auditing, uh, connector versioning, orchestration, et cetera, et cetera. And we have the data plane, which is just the piece, very simple piece that is very easy to install and get running. You can even run it on your laptop and connect it to, uh, to Airbyte Cloud. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's just the piece that is actually seeing the data moving from one system to the other. And this is really the, the piece around data sovereignty. Is today, especially in the AI age, data is just so precious. Yeah, so true. We want to give the control to people to decide who 
actually has access to the data. And that's that's really everything that is at the center of Flex is sovereignty, but ease of use as well. Yeah, very helpful. I think I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders and that is one thing that they always mention is, Ravit, uh, we are happy to uh, adapt AI very quickly. We are happy to make sure that we have agents in place. We, we are happy to make sure where agents are talking to agents and they're working together. But what about the access? We want to make sure that the data is given to the right people, in this case, also the right agents. Uh, so it is not um, kind of this, like we are keeping that AI, we are you know, using AI responsibly, uh, but at the same time, the data uh, sovereignty is in place. So I think uh, that is a huge problem that you all are solving. I kind of also have a curious question. You mentioned about data activation. Now data activation, you, you know, you are, uh, moving trusted models data out from the warehouse into Salesforce, HubSpot, I, I guess, customer.io. Uh, uh, why bring this into Airbyte? And what is it What is it that is like today? Kind of wanting to know a little bit more. Yeah, for, for me, it's really about having, having a real platform that can move data across systems. If mm -hmm. you only move into data warehouses, well, it's just one side of the, of the of the coin of moving data because once the data is in the warehouse, well, you get analytics, but you can extract even more value from data when it can flow into operational system. And going for data activation is basically entering this era of what we call like the Airbyte platform, where. 100% of your needs for moving data across systems can be handled by Airbyte. And okay. we've, been started, we've been starting with the, the like three main connectors that our customers were asking for, but we have a long list of all the places where we want to deliver data into operational system. And what we've been doing also behind the scene is the same way we built an engine for creating, building, maintaining, connector at scale, like, you know, we have like tens of thousands of, of connectors that lives in that live in the wild, whether they were contributed to the to, the, to our open source repository or whether people are just keeping it to themselves or like managing it through the through the builder. We're building a very similar system for yep. the, the activation space. So the goal is just over the next year is like how are we going to expand the breadth of all these data activation uh, destination. Yeah, love it. Uh, I'm just going to shift gears a little bit as well towards the AI loop, right? Uh, give me a simple AI loop uh, that scores score goes out, outcomes come back. How does you know Air by 2.0 make that reliable? Uh, can you share a little bit about that too? Yeah. So today, the thing to understand with uh, whenever you're building an AI workflow, you know, when you are in the analytics world, mm -hmm. the extract and load parading works really well because storage is cheap on warehouses. So what you can do is you can just import everything. And Airbyte originally was really not focused on doing any kind of transformation. It was just, we give you the data. If you're using like silver, uh, okay. like bronze, silver, gold type of step, well, then you do the processing. For AI workflows, uh, especially for the customers we're working with, there is a lot of things that they are looking to figure out. And we're basically back into an ETL type of motion, which is very yep. interesting. People don't call it ETL because not everyone working on like AI software, building this new software is versed into what are the paradigms that exist in the data world, but that's basically mm -hmm. what's happening. So for us, when we're looking at working with these companies is either they do AI directly within their warehouse, like smarter analytics, et cetera, et cetera, or they're actually building an end application, whether it's external or internal. And at that point, the loop for us is really, we just give them the data. We drop it in a place where they will be able to kick off all the processing, whether it's iterating on the schema, integrating into it into like vector databases, integrated into their agent. But right now, we are very, very focused on making sure that these new companies, this innovation are powered by the data that we can bring to them. And we remove this pain of 
connecting to all these systems. So that's really where nice. where, where we at. But with taking a, a stronger, uh, like we're developing the product in a way that now we can also run some level of orchestration to actually go a little bit further into how the um, into how the, the the processing goes post ingestion. So yep. that is something pretty I'm pretty excited about when uh, when it comes maybe for Airbyte 3.0 we talk about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, that's fantastic, Michelle. And uh, I'm pretty sure with uh, 2.0, there are things kind of moving very fast. Uh, talking about how fast it is, uh, I, I obviously have seen uh, the announcement. It says like 4 to 10x faster, right? Uh, how did how did you change that under the hood? Protobuf, uh, partitioning, and the orchestrator change. Uh, can you walk us a little bit through these wins as well? Kind of curious to know a little bit more. Yeah. So when it comes to speed, I think the, the team and the product, we have one mantra in head in our head today is like, Airbag can never be the bottleneck. So there will be data that will move slowly. You know, for example, if you're putting data from an API that is slow, that has rate limits, mm -hmm. you, there is no way around that. Like you, you like the source defines just the speed. But there are places like if you're thinking about databases, if you're thinking about files, which is extremely uh, useful for like AI workload. Like, yeah, one thing I did not mention is like for AI workloads, we're focused a lot more on like on uh, unstructured data, so pulling the documents from from sources. But on the speed side, we did we did have to revamp a lot of things from the platform to enable that almost like unbounded pipe between source and destination, and it came from I think you said it. It comes from technically. It comes from a few few key decisions. Is first one, much more efficient uh, serialization protocol, also smaller. So the the footprint on the network when we're moving data across system is smaller, so it goes faster. Uh, there is a lot of things that we're doing now, on, like on m multiple reads. Before yep. it was single read from the source, your single writes into the destination. Now we have the ability to partition tables to partition. Uh, the source so that we can have multiple workers like pulling data out. So that gives us basically, you know, you say 4x, 10x, what we've built is really the platform that allows us to just scale to infinity. We just want to go step by step. Wow. But that, that was a massive revamp on how we replicate data for like the high scale data sources and high scale uh, data destinations. Fantastic. Uh, Michelle, something that our yeah. community was asking a lot for. So I, I I was pretty sure that the developers have like so much uh, uh, attention to detail that they always and and thinking about speed they always want it to be faster and better. So yeah. you 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 always Airbyte always does that. Airbyte always keeps community first. Listen to them first. I've seen that first and I've attended workshops in the stuff the meetups that you all do. Uh, talking about community. Uh, and you know the enterprises who were using one uh, and now uh, you know the adoption uh, will happen for two uh, Can you tell us a little bit about if I'm on one point one dot oh, what is the part to two dot oh? Who should go first, and what's the next on the roadmap as well? Yeah, so going from one dot oh. To 2.0, of course, it's a very, it's a it's a step function in terms of what the product looks like. So there is there yep. will be a migration path. I mean, I, mm -hmm. we, we do have some documentation to say how do you go from 1.0 to 2.0, but the principles of the platform remains the same. It's like you always have sources, you always have destination, you create a connection between the two, and data just flows. So yes. In terms of maintenance, there will be some uh, some uh, something to do, but what you get, the value you get out of it is just is just insane. Like it, it you know, 1.0 was really about everything must succeed. 2.0 is like they must succeed, but they they need to be really really fast. So fast, that's right. that's what you get, and I think everyone think everyone wants things that go much faster, it's like less room for mistake, less error, less less possibility of errors, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is a path, like we will continue to iterate, like we work a lot with the, with our community and with our, with our users to understand like 
where are the pain points whenever you're deploying a byte, whenever you're maintaining a byte. And I'm not even talking about connector, but just the platform itself. But we had a big step up, especially because that was a prerequisite to make Flex really solid as a, as a product. Like it has to be crazy simple to install. So yep. maybe it starts from scratch. That's fine. But because it goes nice. fast, well, worst case is you you resync everything, but it will go fast. So you don't, you won't have to wait like days for data to to be to be refreshed. That's definitely good news for a lot of enterprise leaders and developers out there. Uh, so that's fantastic, Michelle. Uh, I think uh, you know this is massive announcement uh, for sure uh, for Airbyte community for the open source community as well. Uh, good question for you, Michelle. If people want to reach out and learn more about it. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are blogs, there are documentation. Uh, is there a place you would point them to? I mean, I would always start with the website. I think there is a lot of resource based on what journey you want to follow. Like our community members, a lot of people just go on the website, click on the the, the Slack link, and that's where yep. they get in touch with with the team and with other uh, member of the of the community. Of course, we have our GitHub repository where anyone can just download the software and start running with it. And otherwise, yeah, I mean, obviously there is a talk to sales button. <laughs> and if you don't want to talk to someone, you can always uh, self-serve into a like that. This is fantastic. Uh, Michelle, um, once again, uh, thanks for sharing all the details. Thanks for getting on the Ravid show. It is like a ritual that we do every year or every time we all make announcement. So I'm happy to be a part of, you know, the journey of uh, Airbyte uh, 2.0. Um, thanks again for sharing all the details. Airbyte, guys, for those who are watching us, Airbyte 2.0 brings hybrid control, real activation, and a faster engine. Uh, and don't be scared of the speed. It will help you and you can do a lot of things that was taking months or at least weeks. You can do it in days. Uh, if you work in data platform, marketing ops, sales ops, maybe support ops, uh, this is worth the look. Uh, I'll make sure to share all the links uh, of the announcements that you all have made, uh, Michelle. But we'll keep the conversation going. I have all the, uh, the, the details already. I look forward to it and um uh, once again thanks for visiting the Ravit show such a pleasure thank you thank you Ravit, and see you for three dollars for sure thank you very much michelle and uh thank you everyone for joining us today